Okay, so Ghostbusters came out over a week ago now, and I saw it in its opening week, so blame me for helping its box office success. Although, to be fair, it hasn't really done much in terms of huge money. The fifth Ice Age movie made over £1 million more here in the UK. Either way I go about this review, I'm gonna get hate. If I like it, the Ghostbusters fanbase will murder me, and if I hate it, I'm a misogynist. So fuck it, I'm just gonna bite the bullet now and accept the thrashing my arsehole's going to receive. The original Ghostbusters is one of my all-time favourite movies. It was a fantastic, silly little movie with special effects which although maybe a little bit rusty at times, still look pretty damn good to this day. It's one of those horror comedies that even though aren't scary, do definitely have a fantastic, creepy atmosphere that is suitable for children while also kind of scaring them a little bit. I love that movie so much. The second one is definitely not as good. They crank the humour up in the film, take away most of the horror elements and give us a story which pretty much just plays things really safe. Like the plot for the most part is the exact same as the original. Four guys have to stop the bad guy who's causing damage around New York, plus Sigourney Weaver has to be saved by Bill Murray. Although not terrible and definitely really funny at times, the second movie really lacks a lot of the charm and wit that made the first film so good, but many of the elements that made the first movie so great are still intact, including the fact that it's a film that per perfectly shows off the chops of four fantastic comedians from that time. It can be looked at as a time capsule of comedy from the 80s and in many ways so can this new movie. But here's the problem, this is a time capsule of modern comedy at its worst. Yep. I hated this movie, send your hate to this address. There is no denying that if you go into this film angrily hoping to hate it, you will leave hating it, and if you go in wanting to love it, you'll probably love it. But I was kind of indifferent. Sure, part of me was expecting it to be terrible, and part of me wanted to hate it because the original is such a beloved movie to me. But at the same time, I wanted to be open-minded. I've enjoyed many remakes of some of my favourite movies before, so I hoped I could enjoy this. I like Kristen Wiig, I've never seen Kate Kate McKinnon or Leslie Jones and anything that I remember before and Melissa McCarthy is one of a few comedians that are big now that I actually despise. But you know I was willing to give her a chance in this movie. I was willing to give everything a chance, in fact in some ways that was why I never watched the trailers. I mean I also never planned on watching the movie but things changed. So I went in hoping to just have a fun time and yeah there are moments I enjoyed. But so much of the film was just left with me either groaning or just sat in complete silence. As I heard others in the cinema laughing, I was just completely shocked that people could find some of this funny. Similar to Ghostbusters 2, this movie basically follows the exact same formula as the first movie, which makes me really excited for the huge franchise they wanted to create from this. In the film, Kristen Wiig's character Erin is trying to get tenure at the university she works at, but she discovers an old book she co-wrote with a friend has been republished, the book being about ghosts. So she goes to this old friend Abby, played by Melissa McCarthy. Abby has an assistant at the university she works called Gillian who is played by Kate McKinnon. Abby agrees to take Erin's book off the market if she comes with them to investigate a paranormal sighting. They go see a ghost Erin has puked on and after a video of her screaming about seeing a ghost is released they all get fired. Oh yeah and that ghost puking is done through a jump scare. Something that every single ghost in this film does it has a jump scare. Because instead of creating an atmosphere and adding layers of hidden darkness like the original did to warrant it being considered a horror comedy they can just add the cheap Deepest possible scares. This is fitting since they have a fart joke like 10 minutes prior to this. Oh wait, correction, it's a queef joke because they're women and obviously don't have arses. They then decide to start a new organisation to investigate ghosts. They hire a secretary called Kevin, played by Chris Hemsworth. Kevin is probably the stupidest character in movie history. Like, there were moments where I laughed at him and thought his character was actually pretty funny, but then there are stupid moments where he is so ridiculously dumb, like, no person is that stupid. Leslie Jones' character Patty comes to the group after seeing a ghost, so they go down and after trying to capture the ghost, Patty ends up joining the group. Meanwhile, there's a villain who is possibly one of the worst villains I've ever seen in a movie. This guy wants to get revenge because he was bullied, so he's going around with this device that releases ghosts. And like, he's captured a load of them behind glass or some shit and is about to release them all into the world. And by world, I mean New York City. The villain just has such a terrible motivation, and he is the most unthreatening villain he could possibly be. They could have easily gone down the route of making him just a pawn in the game, like in Ghostbusters 2, but no, this one guy is the main villain. Spoiler alert! He then kills himself, and somehow instead of becoming a normal ghost, he becomes this huge, powerful ghost that can possess people and change form into whatever. Like, 
What the fuck? He's just a normal guy. How does he have all these powers? In the final act, he tells the Ghostbusters that they can choose the form he takes to attack them. You know, exactly like in the original. How does this normal guy have that power? He's not like Gozer, this super powerful demon. He's just your average guy from down the street who was bullied. The humor in this movie is really pretty bad. Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy seem to go back and forth between playing characters and being themselves. They have a lot of improv as expected for a Paul Feig movie, but in a film like this it just doesn't work, or at least not in the way they do it. At least in the original Ghostbusters movie, if any actor improvised, they seem to still be playing that character. They don't just become themselves and step out of character. Kristen Wiig seems to have one joke, which is how deadpan she is. Like, that style of joke she uses is funny maybe once or twice, but not as every single joke she makes. I do like how Melissa McCarthy is a lot more restrained in this film than normal, but I still do not find her funny. Leslie Jones has a few funny moments, but for me she just kind of seemed like the most stereotypical over the top black woman she could be. This really ruined it because she's just playing a character that I've seen millions of times but done better. Kate McKinnon really steals this show. I'm not saying all her jokes made me cry with laughter and I'm not saying that there weren't moments where I groaned at her. But for the most part she was the most interesting character to watch. Her timing and pace was just fantastic all throughout well, and she really seemed to be a character and not just playing herself. Also in the action scenes she is the most exciting to watch. Like in the climax she does some really cool stuff while the rest of the guys don't really do anything. People wanted the film to be made as a girl power movie and I'm not against that too, in fact I massively support it. But the problem is surely girls should rather want an original blockbuster movie that a lot of effort and passion has been put into and not a crappy remake. And although the girls are portrayed for the most part as the strong independent women who save everyone, they're also portrayed really badly as well. Like for example there is the character Erin who has a huge crust on Kevin and turns into a drooling baby when she's around him. Like, how is that making us strong and independent? And in fear of receiving huge amounts of hate and being called misogynistic, this film is incredibly sexist. I am all for being equal, but this is literally the complete opposite of that. In this film, every single guy is either inhumanely stupid or a villain. There is not a single character who is either smart or not a dick in some way. And the final villain is defeated by shooting it in the dick. That is no joke either, that literally happens. This film, instead of doing what it should be doing and inviting all people into the film, are basically segregating women and men and slapping the men with insults while doing it. The special effects in the original, well, no doubt the greatest now, definitely would have been impressive at the time. The effects in this aren't impressive now. In fact, they're pretty fucking terrible. Like, it's just so cartoony and early 2000 men in black esque, and that really took me out of the film. It just looks so terrible. There are a lot of callbacks to the original, some of which work some of which spectacularly fail. Like, the cameos from the original cast are all terrible, they're just so obviously forced in and none of them work. But in contrast, they surprisingly use Slimer pretty well. At first when I saw him I groaned because he looked awful, but he had a moment where he returned that actually felt like classic Slimer from the original movie and also from the cartoon shows, and he was really kind of funny. Some of what made this movie so bad was how this film was so copy and paste and didn't take any chances. I really like them showing off the new weapons, those were pretty cool, especially in the action scenes. But everything else is just so average and just things we've seen before. Like if you want to create a new film and start from scratch, you need to make a reason why people should watch this and not just because it has women in it. You should expand the universe, take things in new directions, shake the formula up a bit. Not just do everything we've seen before all over again, but nowhere near as good. The first act of the film isn't the worst, I chuckled a couple of times and was actually kind of enjoying myself, but the film falls flat on its face after that and just takes things into stupid territories with a villain about as threatening as a fucking pee. I tried to enjoy this movie, even if the terrible marketing and absolutely disgusting attitudes from the people behind the film did try and ruin that. But even putting everything aside, even after going in hoping it would be at least a somewhat decent movie like everyone seems to say, I still came out of the film hating it. Is it a harmless movie? Yeah, kind of. Although I felt some of it was kind of offensive, I was never screaming at what was happening. I was never super angry, but you know what I also wasn't doing? Liking the movie. 
The jokes don't save the film. I chuckled maybe twice in the whole film. And there were moments where I felt like they could have been funny, but they just didn't make me laugh. This film just feels so sterile, so colourful, so cartoony, and just so bland. Everything that the original movie was not. This is just such an uninteresting movie. There are some things that stopped it from being the worst thing in the world, but overall, I did not like this movie. And I left absolutely astonished that even despite the huge amount of audience panning, it still got decent reviews from critics. I just don't understand how anyone can like this movie. It's just a complete and utter mess that wasted so much possible potential. There were so many directions they could have taken the film in. They could have done a Jurassic World-esque sequel slash reboot. They could have even made it a remake that did new things that were interesting and exciting and that breathed new life into the franchise which hasn't moved in over 25 years. But what do they do? Fart jokes and jump scares. Pretty much exactly what sums up the laziness of this film. I'll await the mob now, please go easy on me, I am sensitive. I give Ghostbusters 2016 3 out of 10. Do you talk about me? Do you